Chào everyone, chúc mừng năm mới. And if you did not know what I just said, I just said, hi everyone, happy new year. It is the Vietnamese new year and we are welcoming the year of the rats. So if you would like to know more about the Vietnamese tradition, please follow me home and I will show you what my mom is doing to prepare us for today. Hi guys, so I'm home just walking in. Hi mom. Oh, hi. Chúc mừng năm mới. Hi. Happy New Year. It is the 24th. Chúc mừng năm mới. Chúc mừng năm mới. That means happy. Happy is chúc mừng. And then New Year is năm mới. It's just traditional that we have the eggs and the meat together. This is called thịt ba roi. It's a very popular Vietnamese New Year dish. Soy sauce to eat with the meat. Um, you have the celery and then you got the pork and the tomatoes. We also have the fresh um, cabbage soup with pork. And I think this is the um, Vietnamese vegetable that she used. Um, okay, we'll move over to more food. We also have fish. Okay, going over to the sweeter side. Okay, here is what you call muk, Vietnamese New Year's candy. So here's a little segment where I will try to taste them for you and let you know exactly how it tastes like. Um, for the first one, I will try the ginger. You can see how it looks like. And you can really taste the ginger, the flavor, and it's very sweet and very good. If you don't want cavities, try not to eat this too much. <laughs> Next one up would be the melon sugar sticks. And it's exactly how I just described it. It's very sugary. The melon is completely dried up. And it really just looks like a sugar stick. And if, when I bite into it, I can still taste the melon taste, which is very good and sweet but still good. It's not like you're eating a sugar stick. It's as sweet as sugar, but there's a melon taste to it. Now on the Dutch candy dish, you saw this black stick here and you're, wonder you're probably wondering what is that black stuff? Sesame seeds and it's black sesame seeds. You see the sesame seeds? It's black and um, they coated it with sugar and dried it up. This is not the Dutch candy that I typically eat, so I can't really tell you how I feel about it. I just don't really eat it at all. Um, but I can tell you that it is sweet and has some kind of texture to it. The next one up is the peanut and caramel. Um, you can see that it's just peanut inside um, and caramel in between. So, I mean, it tastes like the American version of the caramel and peanut. When I bite into it, I can really taste the peanut more than the caramel. So, it's pretty good. These are the Dutch candy that you can get at the Vietnamese um, market. So, if you like the segment, you can always go out to an Asian grocery store, a Vietnamese grocery store, and try to pick up some during January or February, right around the Vietnamese traditional New Year. Here is the bun tech that we usually eat during that. It is called the sticky rice cake. And I wouldn't call it cake because it doesn't taste really sweet. There's meat and beans inside. There's a little bit of, um, 
pig fat in there. The meat just give it a um, savory flavor. It's not sweet at all. Um, you can eat this with soy sauce or you can also eat it with sugar. So if you never had bantaek, if you can say it right, bantaek um, before, then let me just take a little bit a bite off for you to envision how it tastes like. Now, what's this piece right here? It is wrapped in banana leaves, so it give it a green uh, look. So I'll try it right now. Mm. Mm. I still have to get into the meat, but It has a very um, savory flavor, not so much of a cake as in term rice cake, but it is sticky. So I'm sitting where the incense table is and for New Year, we usually um, give blast by praying to the people in our family who passed away to bless us for a great new year. Behind me is my sister who passed away in 2016. And I also have family members who have passed away like my grandparents. So in the new year, we pray for good luck. We pray for blessings and we um, set up these incense just to um, pray and show how much we appreciate the new year and the people around us. So it's something that our tradition carries on. So I am unpacking all of the cute aoyai that I got from Vietnam. And I'll look at a few selection over here. The first one is the green one. And it's sleeveless and it has a lot of nice sparkles to it. Uh, it's pretty cold outside right now, about 40 degrees. So I don't think I will go with this one, but it's beautiful to wear it during the springtime. The next one is the orange one. It's beautiful and has, you know, some sort of jewelry on it. It's orange, also a very good color to wear to temple. And this one is the pink one. It has nice cute pearl beads on it that goes down with a very cute design. And the next dress I'm looking at is this one. Very close to the neck, very cute, not so sexy with pearls around it and a hem in rose. Hem and hem and roses, so cute. Baby blue that goes down. And this is a red simple one that's also cute and elegant with flowers. These are the pants that go with the dresses and I'll show how it lays down and in a minute. And you also will see these dresses on me. I will literally <laughs> have to pick one. So should I go with the red? Blue, pink, orange, or the green. Hmm. So I have now changed into my Vietnamese dress and it is called Ao Yai. If you can say it with me, it's called Ao Yai. And look how beautiful it is. So I'll move a little closer for you to see the design on me. Now, one thing I like about the Vietnamese dress, the Ao Yai, is that it just makes the woman's body feel so beautiful. It hugs wherever it needed to hug. For example, the arms, and then it makes the chest come out, and it just hugs the waist give you a little waistline so there it is and um, underneath the dress the pants looks like this 
It's literally called a dress, but underneath the dress is actually a silk pant. And the dress is very thin is because of the weather in Vietnam. It's very tropical, hot and humid. There is no such thing as winter in Vietnam. That is why all the dresses are made, especially um, very thin fabrics. A little history on the Vietnamese dress is that it used to be plain white, but as time progresses, it becomes more of a fashion statement where the dress changed from a simple white dress into more of a fashion type of dress, like the one that I'm wearing now. So I am wearing sneakers tonight. So I just noticed that every single year, I always wear heels to temple and they hurt my feet. Tonight, I realized that when I go to temple, I leave my shoes at the door and walk barefoot around all night anyway. So why wear heels? Now, if you know people who are Vietnamese or have Vietnamese friends, when you come to their house, um, it's only a courtesy that you would leave your shoes at the door because it shows the owner respect um, that you care about their house and you don't want to get the floor dirty. It's part of the conservative way of thinking for the Vietnamese people. And that's why we never go into the house with our shoes. Um, so keep that in mind. If you really want to impress Vietnamese people and let them know that you know about our culture, try what I just told you and they will love you right away. So I am going into the temple tonight without my heels on. I'll be walking around barefooted all night. I'll see you guys there. So we just got to temple and this is called Jewel Phap Hoa. We're heading in here right now. It's beautiful here. You got the um, Mewang Am and this is the goddess that we worship. She brings peace and love. And this is how our Vietnamese flag looks like. We're going to the temple right now. Yeah. What about Buddha? And the Buddha here, if you rub his belly, you get a lot of luck. Yeah, he's the god of fortune and luck. We're just going to give respect to him and him before entering the temple. I usually just say the same prayers every single time. We don't usually say our prayers out loud because it's something from here. So we just keep it in our minds and bow three times. So this is what I mean when I say we have to take all our shoes out. And this is like shoes paradise right now. There's so many shoes. I can't even find my shoes. Oh, my shoes right there. Uh, I see it. It's on top. We're good.
we'll get these oranges and the money envelope for luck. Make sure we eat the fruits. That is the fruits of success, fruits of health, soup, a fruit of luck, and it symbolized everything great. Make sure we eat it, and this is our money envelope. So I am going to get mine now. Happy New Year. I will be doing, I will be getting my luck and for the year. So basically check out the thing. One falls out, there's a number, and then it will tell you how your year will go. So I'll bring you over there now. I already said my prayers. So... Size out. That's okay. good. That's good. I got one slip and one Yeah, that's, down. that's good. And then I'll close my eyes so one stick falls out. pretty happy with this one okay but i'm just going to put it back because i am going to make my year so they have a hot kitchen full of food i just got my soup here all vegetarian stuff in the soup this is a vegetarian soup you got mushroom you got tofu and some cilantro. It's nothing but veggie. There's carrots in here. And the ingredients taste really good. I also have like a Vietnamese hoagie. So I'll open it and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. As you can see, those are imitated meat. They're just really tofu. They're not meat. And there's carrots in there. So everything is pretty much imitated. And let me take a taste, a bite out of it. Mm. So our content ends here, and we had a great day. Uh, I wish you guys a happy new year, 2020. Make it a great year. Thank you for tuning in until the end. Um, I appreciate it. And if you forgot to like and subscribe, please hit the button, subscribe below, and there will be more content coming. Thank you.